You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the South Bond Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everybody on SEC? Great to have you guys along. Brought to you by Rock, Rock Auto. No amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever On today's show, we're going to go around the conference with the latest on the Auburn starting starting quarterback, Nick Saban, going against Lane Kiffin and Old Auburn. We'll find out what is happening on the Plains as they prepare to come to Death Valley. Also, we'll touch on some other topics with Zach as we look ahead to some other games this weekend in the SEC. I am Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Let's jump into it. Ready. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Around the conference. And we go around the conference. We start at Auburn as Brian Harson has a big decision on his hands as Auburn prepares to play at LSU on Saturday night. He's got to decide between Bo Nix and TJ Finley at quarterbacks. Nix struggled and Finley played hero against Georgia State this past weekend. During his Monday press conference, Harson was not ready to name a starter. He said not to go solely based off of what the Tigers' depth chart says. It currently lists Bo Nix as the starter still. He said that has not been decided yet. I know depth charts come out, so many things change during the week. We're going to get our quarterbacks prepared today and tomorrow. We'll go into Tuesday, see how they operate. We need to find ways to put the ball in the end zone. Both guys will be ready to go. So, we may see both guys on Saturday. Maybe the starter doesn't matter. We'll see. Brian Harson also made his first extended comment since firing Wide receivers coach Cornelius Williams following the loss on Saturday. It's the first position coach to be fired in the SEC this season. Arson elevated Eric Keesaw to the new position uh, after he was Auburn's lead offensive analyst and a former Boise State offensive coordinator. Arson said the decision to fire Cornelius Williams was not ideal and he didn't take it lightly and said there wasn't any incident pertaining to the firing. So... Maybe eventually we'll see what the whole story is at some point, but a very odd firing following a game like that. Uh, Auburn quarterback Bo Nix, he was making a radio appearance on Monday morning on the next round, and he talked about being benched. He said, obviously, I was extremely frustrated when they took me out of the game. Coach just decided he wanted to do something else. I felt like I did the best I could. Unfortunately, it wasn't my decision in the end. I'm just a competitive guy, and I want to be in the game. Nix said his status of the starter will depend on this week's practices, and the coaching staff hasn't told him anything yet. He said if they do decide to move on, that's their decision. Over at LSU, Ed Ogeron, he told reporters on Monday that LSU is looking to be back at full strength on Saturday against Auburn. That includes their left tackle, Cam Wire, who Coach O said could be back for the game. If that's the case, it would be the first time LSU would have their starting offensive line back together since week one against UCLA. Cam Wire started in that game, but left with a knee injury. Coach O also said, all-American cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. will see a doctor this week. No update yet on his injury status. Stingley did not play last week against Mississippi State. Was walking around in a uh, walking boot. So we'll see. Projected top 10 draft pick. But it sounds like if he can get healthy at some point, he will play again. Over in Knoxville, Tennessee's quarterback situation remains uh, up in the air as Joe Milton started the season opener for Tennessee. And then Hendon Hooker uh, took over as the guy. Hooker's played well since becoming the starter, but he was forced to leave Saturday's game at Florida after being sacked in the fourth quarter. Joe Milton subsequently came in and finished the game. On Monday, Josh Heupel, during his weekly press conference, said uh, was asked if Hooker would be available for this Saturday's game at Missouri. He said, I'm not sure. But he did add that Hooker is not in any kind of concussion protocol after taking a big hit against the Gators. On the depth chart provided to the media Monday, Joe Milton was listed as the starter for the Missouri game. So we'll see what happens as the week goes along there. Over at Texas A&M, their offensive line is a bit banged up. Talking with the media Monday, Coach Jimbo Fisher said 
O-lineman Jameer Johnson will be good to play this week, and that fellow O-lineman Layden Robinson has returned to practice. Johnson, the starting left tackle, left this past Saturday's loss to Arkansas during the third quarter with a knee injury, but it doesn't seem to be too serious. Robinson was a and starting right guard. He missed the past two games because of injury. Jimbo Fisher didn't say if Robinson would be ready to play this week, but it's encouraging they are getting him back out on the uh, practice field. A couple other notes. Fisher said that starting wide receivers Chase Lane and Caleb Chapman are both currently day-to-day with injuries. AM has struggled to uh, move the ball through the air this past weekend with Zach Calzada finishing with just 151 passing yards against Texas A&M, A&M or against Arkansas, rather. AM will host Mississippi State this Saturday night on the SEC Network. On Monday, over at Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin was asked about the sustained success that Alabama has had under Nick Saban. Kiffin said, it's not like it's just a school. It's one person. He's been able to maintain that through tons of different players, different coaches, more coaching turnover than anyone's ever had. So they got great players. Last year when we played them, they had six first-rounders. We had two draft picks, period. Kiffin also added that Alabama's dominance in recruiting won't be ending anytime soon. The transfer rule is helping them out as well. Also on Monday, Nick Saban gave some of his credit for the offensive transformation at Alabama to Lane Kiffin, who is now the head coach at Ole Miss. Saban said, I learned a lot of offensive football from Kiffin, who was with Saban from 2014 to 2016. Regarding quarterback Matt Corral, Nick Saban said he is very elusive. He can extend plays, a very accurate passer. He can make plays with his feet. He is as talented as anyone we've seen run or pass in a long time. So Ole Miss's big game with Alabama. Set for kickoff, 2.30 Central on Saturday. will be televised on CBS. Over at Florida, Dan Mullen admitted Monday at his weekly presser that backup quarterback Anthony Richardson was at 100% last week against Tennessee, but he was held out for precautionary purposes. Mullen said that Richardson was cleared to play and was much improved, and he went full speed for the first time on Friday. He said he was a little tight after doing some of those sprints. and said he should be 100% this week. So it looks like Richardson will be available when Kentucky travels to play uh, at Kentucky or Florida plays at Kentucky. He said, I'm definitely excited to get Anthony back. Uh, Emory Jones said he was mad last week because he thought he was going to get into the game. So bad news for uh, bad news for Kentucky that they're probably going to have to see Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson there. Over at Kentucky, speaking of them, running back Chris Rodriguez off to a hot start, rushing for over 500 yards with three touchdowns. However, the one downside, he has been dealing with fumbles. Rodriguez put the ball on the ground five times this year, including twice in the red zone against Missouri. Coach Mark Stoops said, I'm not in a state of panic or anything, but anytime you have an issue early in the year, you need to get it corrected. Over at Georgia, Kirby Smart expects to get a couple of key players back who have been out for a while. He said on Monday, Darnell Washington and Tyke Smith are a full go in practice this week and are in better shape because they didn't make the trip to Vandy and instead did a workout in Athens. He said, we're under the expectation both those guys will play this week. Kirby also talked about the noon kickoff having an effect on the Georgia fan base this coming weekend. He said, I think it's all about how our fans handle it, the fact that game day's here. I think that helps with recruiting. I think the way our fans handle it, the atmosphere they create, it gives us probably more time at the end of the game as opposed to guys being gone and jetting out of here for long drives home as far as recruiting goes. But Kirby Smart was asked, uh, has asked fans to come out early to Sanford Stadium, especially since the last hour of ESPN's college game day will take place inside Sanford Stadium. Lastly, regarding the second-year jump that Arkansas has had under new head coach Sam Pittman, in terms of wins and losses, Smart referred to Sam Pittman's first-year improvement from where Arkansas was previously. He said what's really helped Sam – is the buy-in and the belief the kids have in him. He's got eight or nine super seniors. Eight or nine super seniors makes a big difference there. Kirby Smart preparing for a tough, tough Arkansas team this weekend. I want to remind you guys again, thanks again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to be joined by Zach Blackerby of Locked on Auburn. That's coming up next. Need to remind you guys about our friends over at Price Picks. This is for if you're a college football fanatic and you haven't heard about Price Picks yet, you need to go check them out. It is daily fantasy made easy. I love them and I know you're going to love them too. Price Picks is the leader in college sports daily fantasy. They offer more college football props than anyone in the world. 
any prop you can think of, from yardage to touchdowns, even interceptions, interceptions thrown, all of you guys out there that deposit and use our promo code, which is locked on L O C K E D O N, you'll receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks allows you to pick two to five players and an over under on their projections. And you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it's just you versus the projected numbers. Go check them out right now. Use their award winning app you can find it on the App Store or Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Prize Picks safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Go check them out. PrizePicks.com. Use the promo code Locked On, or go to your app store and download the app today. Price Picks Daily Fantasy Made Easy. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is impossible for your local auto part chain store to stock all the parts that you need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait for the person behind the counter to type in things on their computer when you can do that at home? Save time and money. When you use rockauto.com, you'll save sometimes 30, 50, even 100% on the same auto parts that you would find at the local chain store. You can find them right there at rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today. Find the solution for your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you're right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need is rockauto.com right now. Along here, locked on SEC, and uh, pleasure now to be joined by our buddy, host of Locked On Auburn, our good friend Zach Blackerby, jumping in with us to talk all things SEC, and he joins us now. Zach, what's going on, man? Gordy, apologize for being a little late, uh, but I'm excited to talk a little Auburn football with you, man. Crazy stuff <laughs> happening here on the plains these days. Yeah, we got you now. A little audio quirk there to start the interview, but no big deal. We're uh, set up and we're ready to go. And yeah, man, I we just talked with you two weeks ago, and I'm like, ah, oh, we'll talk with Zach in a couple weeks. Auburn's going to be just fine. They're going to be cruising. They'll be winning a lot of games. They're supposed to be winning and all this. Uh, let's start first with, uh, you know, scale of one to ten. How shocked were you that Auburn found themselves in a competitive game this past weekend against a much more inferior opponent? Uh, ten. Uh, ten on that one. I mean. We went into it knowing Georgia State was going to be the, the second best team that Auburn played thus far, obviously Penn State being the first. But, yeah, they um, they didn't look good. They were without Jacoby McLean, Lowe, and Papo. That was a bigger deal to the defense than I thought it would be. But, look, they, uh, they just weren't focused. They didn't execute. And they looked lost on both sides of the football. And props to Georgia State, they almost did it. I mean, they were seconds away, one play away from – from really putting together a, an awesome upset. They upset a really good Tennessee team a few years ago. I say really good. They went eight and five that year. So, I mean, they were a fine Tennessee team. Best they've been in a while. But, yeah, yeah, they almost they, they almost pulled it off. And, uh, fortunately, for the Tigers, they did not. But it took a, a quarterback switch. Bo Nix, we thought it was impossible. But Bo Nix was benched by Brian Harson, And uh, TJ Finley came in and really put the team on his back, especially offensively, a 98-yard drive to win the thing. Let's talk about Knicks. What 
did you see out of him? What was what was different? Because he was so good in the first couple games, right. had some good moments against Penn State, inconsistent. But what was happening on Saturday where he just wasn't good? Yeah, and, and you know, I, I thought he was fine against Penn State. You know, you'll see different opinions out there, but yeah, I think he's been pretty good up to this point. And then uh, all of a sudden, he looks like. 2020 Bo Nix is kind of what Auburn Twitter was saying over and over and over again. Oh, no, 2020 Bo Nix is back. And it looked a little different, Gordy, right? Like, in the past, we'd see him leave the pocket for no reason. But, you know, we saw him, his throwing mechanics kind of break down a little bit against Georgia State. But when it really came down to it, it was accuracy. And, look, one of the early plays against Penn State, he hurt his shoulder. He got up kind of, you know, rubbing it and working it out a little bit. You saw him be a little uncomfortable physically with that throwing shoulder against Georgia State. So there's a lot of folks that say, hey, maybe he's hurt. Maybe that's something that he's dealing with. And, you know, maybe that was what caused a lot of the accuracy issues that we saw on Saturday because, look, he was very inaccurate. He was not hitting wide open guys, guys like Javaris Johnson. I mean, Javaris Johnson should have a 70-plus yard touchdown catch to his name based on how he played Saturday, I mean, guys got open, but just a lot of overthrows, a lot of misses, and it just didn't look right. He did not look like the same quarterback that we've seen so far this season. What did you see from Finley? And, man, like when they got the punt and it's down at the two-yard line with, what, uh, two minutes to go or whatever, I'm going, no way in hell. I mean, I, I TJ Finley's a fine quarterback, there's, but there's no way in hell he's going to drive them 98 yards down the field for a touchdown, and lo and behold, he does. What did you see out of him? Uh, I mean, he looked like a starting SEC quarterback on that drive. And there were times before that where it, it didn't all click, right, Gordy? But there were times, I mean, there was a, they start the drive off with a really nice run from Jarquez Hunter. And then after that, it was really all on the arm of TJ Finley. And there was a third and 10 early in the drive where it's like, oh, no, this is about to fall apart real quick. And then you have to have the debate of do you punt or do you go for it on, you know, fourth and 10. And he had a great throw to Kobe Hudson to move the chains. And then there was another third down situation, and he was able to, you know, scramble, use his feet, and, and find Elijah Canyon on the sideline with an NFL toe-touch type catch. Really, really good stuff. And then several plays later, it's fourth down, and they've got to move the chains or the football game is over and immediate pressure from everywhere, and he eludes guys and somehow gets away from it, and he finds Shedrick Jackson. Shedrick Jackson scores his first ever touchdown with the Auburn Tigers, and so he looks like a different guy. When the game was on the line and he knew it, the team rallied around him. He gave his receivers opportunities, and man, his uh, the way he gets rid of the football, it's really, really fun to watch. I thought that when, um, when we watched him a little bit at LSU last year. I mean, his release point is just so high, and he's so stinking big. He's massive, uh, right. that six seven frame. I mean, he's got a lot of power from where he releases the football. Um, if he can just get the accuracy right, which he did at times on Saturday, um, I think Auburn can have a pretty good quarterback in TJ Finley. Is he the guy this year? I don't know. Brian Harson, as of Monday when he was talking with media, would not make that decision yet. But when they sent out the media packet, the weekly media packet to all members of the media, Obviously, you click on that. And the first thing you do is you scroll down to the depth chart. Bo right. Nix is still listed as the starter. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, Brian Harson would not commit to anyone on Monday. But I think when you look at what Finley did on Saturday, he came in. And this is a guy that's not used to getting these starting reps, Gordy. This is a guy that's used to kind of being a role player in practice and just kind of learning mentally behind Bo Nix, not getting a whole lot of the physical reps, the physical action. He came in, took a few drives to get going, and then once he did, he looked like a really, really good quarterback. So I can't wait to see what happens. If I'm Auburn, I don't announce anything till game time. I don't think there's any reason not to keep LSU on their toes. Give me the gut feeling. I mean, look, the journalists, media fans, they're going to love to have all oh, the storyline of TJ Finley going back to LSU to stick yeah. it to him because they didn't give him the starting job. Uh, gut feeling, who starts Saturday and – how does it play out? If it is Finley, is it Finley the whole game? If it's Knicks, is, and you know, do we see both quarterbacks? How do you see this playing out Saturday? Because it's a late night game in Tiger Stadium, and LSU is going to be rocking. As you and I have this conversation at five o'clock on Monday, I just don't see a reality where Bo Nix doesn't start on Saturday. I think Bo Nix is Brian Harson's guy. I think he's made that decision, and I think he has a shorter leash. 
And maybe Harson's doing this to motivate Bo Nix moving forward. I, I I don't know. I don't know. And you know, I think you could see him respond either way. Nix has been kind of um, he's been on two different radio shows, kind of talking about things today and kind of saying the same thing that he you know was 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 shocked that he was taken out and he thought he was playing fine. And you know, obviously the the Auburn fan base has responded to that in different ways. But my gut reaction is Bo Nix starts, and Auburn does not win in Baton Rouge on Saturday. Hold that thought right there, Zach Blackerby. I want to talk more with you about other right. SEC teams in just a second. But first, I want to uh, tell you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. We've been telling you about them all season long. They're back and better than ever. Of course, football's back, college football, the NFL, all of it available for you to get in on the action. And Bet Online is your number one spot for all things pro and college football throughout the football season. They got a new updated website, new interface, even more odds, props and contests, and betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. If you head to their website right now, you've never signed up before, you can sign up today, receive a 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use their promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the great things they got going on for you. Right now, at betonline.ag, they are the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline, your online Sportsbook experts. Continue our conversation with Zach Blackerby, host of Locked on Auburn. And Zach, uh, as we look ahead to some of the games this weekend, man, it is just like I, I'm I'm going to be going to the LSU Auburn game this weekend. I'm excited to go. Sure. But I'm also talking to friends. I'm like, well, okay, what tailgate are you going to have the TV on? Because I got to see I got to see Arkansas Georgia. I got to see Ole Miss Alabama. I mean, like I. I'm used to sitting in my man cave every weekend and having all the TV screens and watching all the SEC games. But, man, which matchup outside of LSU-Auburn intrigues you most this weekend? Well, fortunately for Auburn and LSU folks, you can wait till the last minute because the game <laughs> might as well just start at midnight at this point. Goodness. Eight well, central. I mean, if you live on the East Coast and you're an Auburn or LSU fan, my God, you're going to be, you know, making making eggs in the morning. Yeah, I'm staffing our um, I'm, I'm staffing our our post game show and getting board ops and all that. It's like, yeah, the show may start at midnight for our post game show. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. But no, like, are you kidding me? Look, I'm obsessed with watching the Arkansas Razorbacks this year. I think they have been so fun to watch. I um, I was kind of waiting towards uh, you know, for the Texas A and M matchup to kind of see if it was legit or not. And boy, I think it is. I think it really, really is. Uh, I can't wait to watch um, Coach Pittman. That he has quickly probably become my favorite coach in the SEC. Um, I, those guys just buy in. And, I mean, they were ahead of schedule last year, and I'm really, really excited to see what Arkansas is able to do on Saturday. I, I, I want to watch every snap of every Arkansas game for the rest of the year. Yeah, it makes you wonder. The early time is Georgia maybe a little bit sleepy. You know, the defense has been lights out of Georgia, don't get me wrong. And K.J. Jefferson being banged up last week does not help Arkansas. But if they're able to run the ball at all, I think Arkansas's defense is very underrated. And, man, if they're able to get to – JT Daniels has not set the world on fire yet this year. Granted, the Georgia run game's really good, but this could be a, a, a slug match, you know, punch each other in the mouth and maybe a little bit low scoring, at least for the first half. So I, I'll be interested to see how that one plays out. Yeah, from an Auburn perspective, you know, Georgia comes to Auburn next week. Can Arkansas kind of beat them up a little bit for the Tigers just to see what's going on there? But, look, I'm not expecting Arkansas to win this game, but – if they can just be competitive, I, I know Pittman's probably not the guy that's really into moral victories, but man, if they could just kind of keep it close, just keep it close with the Georgia Bulldogs, I think that would be um I think that would be a mighty statement for his guys to make this early into SEC play. Then of course the other obvious one outside of Auburn LSU is is Ole Miss Alabama. And I think that's gonna be um I mean that's going to be a fun one to watch. Going to be a ton of a uh, ton of points. I don't I don't care what BetOnline.ag set for the over under for this. You've got to take the over. I don't care what it was. Easy um, money is that what you're saying? I I think so. I think I mean they're, both teams are going to score every drive. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's the CBS uh, two thirty Central game yeah. of the week. And my goodness, uh, you know Matt Corral, we saw him do it last year. He Torch that Alabama defense up and down. Granted, this time it's in Tuscaloosa, but Alabama, I'm looking at, you know, the lines at about two touchdowns. I'm going, what am I missing here? Like, is, is, is Ole Miss, this very well could be last team with the ball wins. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that one plays out. Definitely going to be keyed in on that one. How about Florida, Kentucky? I mean, Kentucky's been this 
kind of sneaky good 4-0 and team. It was the offense early in the season this last week against South Carolina. They were doing it with the defense. Emory Jones has been really good, man. Everything you want to say about where's Anthony Richardson, all this. Emory yeah. Jones is like, forget him. I'm the guy. I'd be curious to see how he responds to this Kentucky defense at a really loud Kroger field on Saturday night. I'm really high on the Florida Gators. I was high on the Florida Gators going into the season. And I think, uh, you know, I, I know it was a big deal for Kentucky to beat Florida a few years ago for like the first time in a million years or something like that. But I'm just not buying it. I, I think this Florida team believes they belong at the top of the SEC East. And uh, I really think that they believe that they can beat Georgia later in the year. That's just kind of the mindset that I see when I watch these Florida Gators and, and listen to our guy Brandon talk about it over on Locked On Gators. I, I just really think they can do a lot of things offensively. And I get that Kentucky is a legitimate team. I don't know if they're a top 25 team, if I'm being entirely honest with you. But based on what they've done so far, you've got to put them up there. But I think Florida may make a big statement on Saturday against the Wildcats. Yeah, it, it would it would be a great one to make. And then on top of it, I mean, I'm still putting everybody's jumping on Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. That Florida Georgia game, I'm I'm not decided on that one yet. When we get there, we'll see how how Florida's looking at that point. Just quick thought on two other ones: Mississippi State going to a And M feels like a get right game for a And M. Yeah. Then playing at home, and man, Leach unfortunately could be talking about a third straight loss for him. And then Tennessee on the road at Missouri, Missouri loses in overtime to Boston College up in Boston and Tennessee looked good in the first half against Florida but second half we got to see lack of depth is really what's hurting the balls right right I mean Mississippi State I don't think has a chance against Texas A&M I think get right game is a perfect way to describe that and look I don't think A&M is all it's cracked up to be that was kind of one of my things that I talked about over the summer was look I know there's a lot of hype for and I'm just not seeing it obviously them dealing with quarterback issues is not an ideal situation, but look, our boy Calzone, I think he's done fine. You know, I know that's not his real name. But that's what I call him. And, and as far as, um, as far as, uh, Missouri versus the Vols, like, look, I'm never going to expect Tennessee to win a game moving forward until, uh, <laughs> until, uh, until something major happens. So yeah, give me, um, give me the Missouri Tigers. Yeah. At least head and hooker can not overthrow guys every time. Like, uh, Joe Milton was doing earlier in this year. All right. I know you kind of hinted at it, but, LSU hosting Auburn. I know you kind of said you feel like it's a game Auburn may or will lose. I just think if if Auburn can establish the ground game, we saw LSU this past week struggle to stop the run when Mississippi State ran it. They just stopped running. Mike Leach is so obsessed with the air raid and throwing the ball. I think Auburn's going to have some success running the ball with Tank Bigsby and company, and I think if they stick with that and then go with the short throws, no matter who the quarterback is, I think Auburn's in this game to the very end. I think you're right. I, I think it's going to be close. And look, if Auburn could run the ball consistently and not have to rely on, you know, whoever starting at quarterback for the Tigers, that's going to be a plus. I mean, the one-two punch of Tank Bigsby and Jarquez Hunter, and then Sean Shivers returned off of, uh, you know, after missing two weeks, he's kind of going to be that gadget guy. It looks like he, uh, he ran the ball twice um, against Georgia State. Both were jet sweeps. So we'll probably see him more in a similar role for that moving forward. Maybe you'll see some play action off of that or something. I think you'd be pretty creative if you're Brian Harson or Mike Bobo there. But uh, I, I think LSU wins this game when it's all said and done because I just don't trust Auburn's offense at this point. As far as play calling goes, they just get too cute in the red zone, and I don't like that, Gordy. And then as far as um, as far as the defense, they've got to find an identity. They look totally different when Zacoby McClain got done serving that that one half suspension from uh from that really bogus targeting call that was called against Penn State, right. and uh, I mean the defense looked way better when he was there. It's kind of expected that Owen Papo makes his return, and so Auburn gets their two best players back on the field at the same time, and then the one two three punch. And if you throw in Chandler Wooten there at the linebacker position, been really really good. Their run defense has been great leading up to Georgia State. Um, was that a personnel thing? Was it a scheme thing? Was it a discipline thing? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But, you know, I, I just recorded a conversation with Auburn linebacker Chandler Wooten uh, for Locked On Auburn, which will be up uh, today when you're listening to this. It'll be up this evening. But I think uh, I think when it's all said and done, I think they do enough on defense, but it's just the offense for the Tigers that is going to kind of make them fall short. Zach, great stuff. I was going to tell, uh, you know, to let our listeners know what you got up on the podcast, but Chandler Wooten, part of Locked On Auburn, pretty cool deal. Yeah, yeah, one of Auburn's two permanent team captains. We wanted to go out and and solidify our relationship with him. He's um, 
he's a he's a pretty cool dude. And so we're uh, we're excited starting uh, starting I guess today this evening when it goes up uh, tonight Tuesday evening, it'll um it'll be a weekly thing. So we're gonna chat with him. He talks about what the Tigers are doing to prepare for this road trip going to Baton Rouge as well as kind of what all is going on in practice uh, in response to them almost losing to Georgia State. He's got a lot of really, really interesting stuff um, to, to talk about. So, yeah, be sure to check that out. Yeah, just FYI, a whole SEC, stop scheduling Georgia State and Georgia Southern. Just nothing ever good happens with scheduling those two schools. So That's right. That's right. Yeah. And somehow this is Auburn's first time playing Georgia State, right? And so I bet they don't do that again, Chris. Yeah, they'll be uh, they'll be delayed. Just like uh, – who was it? Tennessee just bailed on army. They're like, yeah, yeah, go schedule Akron or somebody. You'll be, you'll be yeah. dumping out very quickly. Zach, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Gordy. I appreciate you brother. All right. Zach Blackerby host of locked on Auburn right there. As we get out of here, want to say again, thanks again for making locked on sec, your first listen every day. And a quick reminder, betting on the sec does not have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new locked on bets podcast, your boy Q at least Sterling Lee will give you his lock of the day. Follow Locked on Bets, brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Continue to look ahead to the games happening this weekend across the SEC. Talk to you guys tomorrow.